Okay, good day. Welcome to Jeepin.net. Today we're actually going to be applying Pore 15 to our project LJ Rubicon. Uh, we're only doing the back half, back half of the vehicle at this time uh, because we currently have everything removed. It's a great time to do this project. Uh, we also know we have some problems with our transfer case bolt skids, and we also know we're going to be doing something with our front fenders here eventually. So when we tackle each one of those projects, we'll have a lot more better access to the vehicle, and at those times we'll, we'll do those sections of the vehicle. So applying the Pore 15 is a three-step process. In fact, it's a fourth step. Uh, Pore 15 doesn't tell you about the fourth step, but it is important. So first you have to do the cleaning and degreasing. So that's what I've currently done. Uh, we removed everything underneath here. The differential's gone, the gas tank's gone. Um, I've even gone as far as removing the emergency brake cables uh, and having those being painted here separately. Um, after that, you do a metal prep and then you apply the Pore 15 and then you actually have the top coat because Pore 15 is not uh, UV protected. So let's talk about a little bit more about step number one. Uh, this is the most important step. This is when you're going to be cleaning and degreasing uh, the metal uh, frame body you're going to be uh, applying your pore 15 to. Uh, this is where I spent 90, actually probably realistically 95% of my time. Um, first I hit it with the pore 15 cleaner degreaser. I then went through with a couple of different wire wheels on a drill, an angle grinder. I had a few different uh, wheels I use here. They're all in the trash now. Um, I used a Dremel to get into those nicks and crannies, and that got rid of kind of a lot of the surface stuff, a lot of the imperfections uh, that would have kind of gotten gotten the paint to not apply correctly. Um, I then went through and actually tried a few different degreasers because um, I was having a hard time getting rid of some of the grime. I tried the Simple Green um, Heavy Duty Cleaner. It actually worked pretty good. I thought it was the best until just very recently I picked up this WD-40 Cleaner Degreaser, and it is amazing. Um, I highly recommend this product. It is really good. Um, seems very safe to use, uh, but very strong at the same time. I don't know what's in it. I haven't even looked at that yet. Um, the Pore 15, I was hoping this stuff would be amazing, but it's it's really not. So after I did all the wire wheeling, I came back and tried to get rid of the kind of metals that's kind of on there, the, the, the flake metal. Um, here, I'll grab part here. So here's a pretty good example of it. So this is the, the, the bump stop balances, you know, this sort of stuff that's caked on there. That's the sort of stuff that it makes poor 15 applications not work well. Um, you know, if this part was off the vehicle like this one, this one's going to be easy to clean up, but stuff that's on the vehicle is a little harder. So I went through first with a chip hammer, uh, you know, a wire brush, these wire brushes. And it gets off the small stuff. The big stuff doesn't really come off easily. So I tried my air hammer. Uh, with a chisel attachment and it worked but it wasn't working as well as i was hoping and it was doing kind of a lot of damage to the metal so that's what i heard about this air hammer attachment i bought this on amazon for i don't know maybe 20 bucks maybe not even that much um there's a longer one and a short, shorter one hindsight i would probably would have bought both um but uh it worked really well uh, as you can see here in this video it just hammered away at, at that stuff and it's it's really good. It, I wish I bought it at the start of this project. Uh, I, I am way too long on this step, uh, but uh, making sure that it's done well because this step is what's going to make this product work well for the long term. Uh, Safety-wise, uh, you don't need a respirator, uh, like paint respirator, uh, but you do need a good uh, mask. Um, so I used kind of the cheap throwaway ones, but I also brought in my woodwork and mask, uh, and it worked actually really well. And I'm probably going to buy another one for the shop, actually. Um, safety glasses, you need a couple, you know, you need to make sure you have those. Face shield, I bought for this product um, project and really, really uh, like this one. Uh, this is the UVEX, um, really good shield. I didn't notice I have a little crack in it here now, um, but uh, it does a really good job. Um, safety gloves, obviously, and uh, some, you know, uh, examining gloves uh, for these products. These aren't hugely dangerous, which is why you don't need the paint respirator, uh, but uh, you do not want to get this stuff on you. You don't want to drink it and definitely don't want that shit in your eyes. So anyway, that's it for step number one. Um, step number two we'll be actually doing tomorrow, um, and that's just the metal prep. So this stuff, we just put this directly in a spray bottle. I'm going to spray it on. Make sure it stays wet for 15, 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna hose it off very well. You want all that product off your vehicle. Uh, it's not something that you wanna leave on there, so I'm going to go ahead and 
spray, 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 and then I'm gonna come back actually the next day and spray again. It's gonna leave a bit of a residue on there after it dries, so that's why I'm gonna go through it again. Um, smaller project, I would go through and actually wipe it down. Um, I can't really do it in this case, it would take me too long probably. But um, once that's done, I'm actually gonna go through it then with an air hose and just kind of make sure everything's really clean. Um, and then actually then we're ready for step number three, finally, which is the Polar 15. So we'll come back in a second and talk about that. Okay, today's a big day. Polar 15 application. So we'll be applying semi-gloss black underneath the vehicle and silver inside the vehicle. Silver has a big advantage on it, it has some of the silver flake. Uh, it will help uh, cover up some of the imperfections some of the pitting that's inside the vehicle. Uh, underneath, I don't care that much, so I'm just going to be going with the standard black. Once you open the stuff, you want to put it in another container to work from because it does start to cure pretty quick. Seal it up as fast as you can, clean up the lid, and put strand wrap over top of it between the can and the lid. Uh, that will allow you to open it then again later. We'll be using cheap throwaway brushes, um, and we're going to be taking safety pretty care careful here. The clothes I'm wearing are going to be throwaway after this. Uh, we're going to be using face shield, glasses, uh, and respirator. We'll be using these gloves, uh, and we're actually going to be taping them around our hands uh, with some painter's tape. Uh, we're doing that because as I'm painting, paint is going to come down on this and it's going to coat me. Uh, I don't want this getting underneath my sleeve. I have holes in my sleeves, uh, so that's going to help aid in that. I'm wearing a hoodie. I'll have my head covered with the hoodie uh, just because I know I don't get, to get this crap in my hair. I did it once with Herculiner and was in there for quite a long time. So anyway, uh, we'll come back here in a few minutes uh, and we'll talk about what we're going to be doing for top coat. Okay guys, it's been a couple days actually since I mixed that paint. Uh, what happened, and I kind of expected this was going to happen, was as soon as I started painting, it just started dripping everywhere and I didn't want to get paint on my camera gear. Okay, So anyway, you would have seen me applying the paint and nothing much to see there. Um, so what has happened is I did two coats and then I top coated. So this is actually the final product here right now. Um, it took me about four to five hours to do the first coat, waited five hours, did the second coat. Second coat did went a little faster because I wasn't as concerned about coverage. Um, I then waited about five or six hours again, I then top coated. Um, the top coat did run in a few areas because it had gotten a lot colder and the poor patina started to cure and it wasn't quite as tacky. Um, so I did have to sand down a couple of the big runs and uh, reapplied paint actually last night to a few of those little areas. So I would recommend uh, top coating fairly quickly. Um, you know, the, it all depends on what your weather is, your humidity, uh, all that. So I can't really give you an actual time frame. You have to go by touch and feel. Um, as I mentioned, this did get everywhere. So uh, my pants are destroyed here, uh, just covered in paint. Um, you can see the tarp took a beating. Uh, and uh, the good thing is I really didn't get any, any on me. I have a little bit on my elbow where there must have been a hole in my shirt I was wearing um, and it's going to be on there for a good time in five days and I can tell that's not coming off anytime soon. Um, but yeah, uh, taping with the gloves, definitely recommend that and full mask. Uh, my mask took a huge beating actually. Um, I'm so glad I was wearing that mask. I didn't have any on my face, I didn't have any on my hands, um, but this stuff would have been on there forever. It applies very glossy, um, and it's very interesting when you put it on. It's very light uh, or very watery. Uh, so you see your brush strokes like crazy, and then you just watch it. It just kind of self-levels itself. I wasn't sure if that was going to happen underneath the vehicle upside down, but it does an amazing job at self-leveling. Um, I'm very impressed with this product. I wish more products would work this way. It's just such a weird product. It goes on so thinly and so lightly, but yet then when it cures, it cures like a glass like you would think that this stuff is like a couple of millimeters thick, but it's not like it's probably like a millimeter under. It's 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 very impressive. Uh, you can tell how it, it really does protect, but you do need to make sure you got full coverage because I can see where, you know, if you have an edge that's not fully formed, uh, that it will peel. And I can see where the proper prep work does matter. Not everything got poor 15. So the axles here, for example, they got pore 15 on the coil perch, a couple of the mounts, and then the rest of it just got spray bombed uh, with the trim clad uh, semi-gloss. Um, that's because those are areas I can easily touch up in the future. They're going to get scraped and that sort of stuff. So it didn't matter about some of those areas as much. It's more the areas I'm not going to be able to see or areas I'm not going to be able to maintain as well uh, are the areas I made sure the pore 15 was really applied to very well. So recommendations for someone else doing this. Um, I got basically three recommendations. Make sure you're covered up very well. 
tape your wrists, have good stuff down. I've covered that already, but very important. Um, I'd recommend doing as small area as possible. So I did way too much here. Um, it took one full can to do the entire back half of this LJ, so a TJ would use even less. Um, but I would, I would have hindsight just done underneath. I would have come back the next day, done the frame, come back the next day, do the wheel wells, come back the next day and do some touch-ups. Um, I think I would have felt a lot better at the next day. After 14 hours of painting, I was pretty sore the next day. Um, and I think I would have got a bit better quality. And the last thing is I probably would have bought the Port 15 in smaller jugs. Uh, they sell a six-pack of four-ounce uh, bottles and I think that's probably the way to go. I've heard other people say that too um, Unless maybe you're doing the inside the tub where you are using a lot of it um, But this stuff I'm amazed at how far it covers. I even actually have um, Probably one-eighth of the can left um, It covers really well um, And yeah, that's what I'm doing in the future. I'm, in fact, I'm going to order some here tonight uh, So I have some on hand for some of the smaller parts I'm going to be painting here in the next little while But yeah, the four ounce cans are the way to go so one of the things I can't really do is tell you guys how this stuff's going to hold up. It's hard, to, obviously, because I just put it on. So what I'm going to do is a year from now, probably December of 2018, come back and give you guys a review on how this stuff's held up, my year-long thoughts on it. And, you know, it's probably not going to look any different because this vehicle sits in the garage most days and really gets off-road and then brought home, clean, and put back in the garage. But, uh, you know, it's going to be in some rocks. So we'll see how that works out. So I'm going to go back, put suspension back in here tonight, uh, get this, get everything backed up, running, gas tank in, evap, all that sort of stuff back in, flip it around, we'll do the front suspension. Uh, we're going to paint the front just with some spray paint, depending on what weather's like, and probably pour 15 next summer. So anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Um, let me know what can make these videos better. Uh, it's hard because people are at all different skill levels, so I got to keep things a little dumb. I try to keep the videos as fast as possible, but also try to give as much information. It, 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 it's hard to do. Um, and also, you know, I don't, I'm not using the best equipment. Um, I'm using pretty cheap equipment, actually. Um, very cheap LED shop lights and that sort of stuff. So yeah, uh, hopefully in time I can improve on some of that. And you know, I've improved on the audio here, hopefully a little bit. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot there, guys. Let me know, thumbs up, subscribe, that helps. Um, yeah, until next time, thanks.